<sighs> What's good everybody? Valley here once again. Welcome back to my car for the final day of UNCG's Cyberpunk HVZ recap. And I have some news to announce. <sighs> for the first time ever in 10 years of them doing this at UNCG, the humans had a victory. And I was in the final. Yeah! Man, my voice is dead. But yeah, the uh, the first mission of today was a escort mission, and we were sorely outnumbered. It was at least two zombies to one, and I was in that group. We had Scott, our dedicated Vortex guy, stick with the uh, the NPC we were escorting that we had to find. Um, we had him with um, the NPC, and we gave him two power ups. One was body armor, which means he needs three hands to tag him, uh, to get him out. And secondly, he had a melee, a medium melee. So it was a, uh, I think it was a zombie strike blade. And that was great. That meant he could be, he's practically untouchable, especially for uh, someone with melee, because if someone gets too close, he can just go tap, 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 and to get them out that way. I get these talon mags emptied. But yeah, the first mission, we went without any human losses, and we were in and out of that mission in 16 minutes, 38 seconds, or whatever I think it was, which is crazy, <laughs> to be honest. A small group of humans with, with basically a, um, a two-to-one uh, like zombie-to-human number managed to get that mission done because we were going way around the uh, the most direct path just to be able to circumvent zombies by crossing streets and stuff so they had to like wait for cars to get past which to be honest was a really good call and then the second mission at the rec center which that was really fun we had pretty much the whole rec center to go through we uh the first half of the mission, like, the first half we had to get points. It was kind of Diablo style, and each zombie had a card, a stack of cards for plus ones. So if they get tagged, they got to drop their card. And special zombies had uh, plus tens and such. And we were also searching for water bottles, which counted for, I think it was uh, 25 or something. I think it was 25. But yeah. And basically those were, they counted as XP and our goal was to level up. Um, and we managed to go, we, we managed to find, I think it was four or five water bottles. It might have been three. I think it was four though. Um, but they were water bottles with glow sticks in them. So they're easy to find, especially because we had the lights dimmed in the, uh, the rec center. And we managed to do that one. With, I think we had one loss. Man, that's humid out here. But yeah. Oh, man. Whew. Then the second mission was in the gymnasium. And we had two separators down. And in each section, there was a boss. The first one was Elias. He had five hit points and um, five second respawn time. But every time he would get hit, he'd call a zombie respawn. And uh, our Sock Ninja, Blowgun Ninja, Weston took him down pretty much all by himself. Second one was Andrew, who was our uh, or Ray. And he could only be taken down by thrown darts or spat darts. So our designated Vortex guy, who has a big bag of like 300 darts that he keeps on him, he's just grabbing handfuls and chucking them at him. <laughs> And that worked out pretty darn well. He took him on pretty much solo. And then the third one was an NPC that we had rescued in the first mission. Um, her name's Angela, but I think her NPC name was Gwendolyn? Yeah. The Ice Mage Lady Girl. And she, since she is normally a sock ninja, and she had a power for a Doom Sock a day, or the Doom Sock a mission, I can't remember. But this time, she had nothing but Doom Socks in her bag. 
So no matter what she threw, that was a doom sock. So you were dead if you touched it, if it bounced off somebody, if you stepped on it, whatever. And she threw one pretty close to me, so I batted it out of the way. It was on the floor with my blaster. <laughs> and by that point, I was down to just the strife as a pistol. I had the sock collapse and everything. And I was down to my last two 12 mags. Because I was like, the drum, empty, toss. 12 flip, toss. Two of the other mags, toss. Barrel, rough cut and everything. Since I ran out of darts and I didn't have enough time to reload because zombies had a, I think it was a 10 second respawn or something on walls. So they were able to respawn that way. So I just tossed the barrel as well. So I was just running with the pistol. Detached from my gear, mind you. But yeah. Empty. 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 And we managed to whittle them down. Just slowly. Actually went down pretty fast. I got this empty box. And one of our veteran players, Vesper. They were... If their blaster had jammed, they have a uh, prophecy with regular style retaliator internals. So they can use them for HVZ easily. Is that empty? Yeah, it's empty. <sighs> so they were down to the messenger that I had made for them. Because they had a messenger at one point and then they lost it or whatever. So I was looking around in thrift stores for ages trying to find a messenger to mod for them, and I managed to find one. I put about a centimeter of brass into each barrel, and I, I don't remember if I did a video on it. I probably didn't, because I was just excited to give it to them. But yeah, they got the last, um, the last hit just as um, Gwendolyn got two or five count. And she was throwing a doom socks, and Vesper got in the shot just as she counted five, and it's throwing a doom sock, and the dart hit her before the doom sock hit Vesper. And I was just acting as support, like I usually do, because I have decent firepower. I'm auto and everything, and I've got range. But the range didn't matter too much. That's why I switched to the uh, the auto strife this time. But the auto strife has gotten me through the whole game, pretty much, and it's performed beautifully. Just sniping zombies left and right and everything. And for my efforts, grab it. I got a Luminate Deputy Badge. Throw your little one. And Luminate was um, the sort of elite faction in of like humans and stuff or cyborgs. I think it was in the game. And uh, yeah, I got one, which is kind of cool. Whew. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit giddy. <laughs> So yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the description below. I'll I, I'll have to tag this and share it around later. But yeah, I'll have, I'll make a, a playlist. I wish like next time I do HEZ, like, especially and or I'm gonna have to have some sort of body cam on me, or like a blaster cam or whatever. I'd love to get a um, a DJI Osmo Two or D Osmo Pocket to keep on like a helmet or something because I would like to run with a helmet. Uh, there's a lacrosse helmet that I saw that was really, really cool. The only issue is I have a big head, so trying to find a helmet is nigh impossible. Oh, man. I'm just... And my voice is absolutely dead from shouting. But that was great. But yeah, let me know in, down in the description down below. Later, I'll add my... Uh, my regular Patreon links and everything if you want to help support the channel. Um, all money that goes into the Patreon goes towards the channel, and I'm working on making a bigger, better work table that's a little more stable. Because the uh, the current workbench is a bit bowed because the uh, the MDF that makes up the, the, the actual workspace is a bit flimsy. So I'm working on getting some thicker, like, three-quarter inch or something MDF to put into that uh, workbench, maybe make some more stable legs with some shelves and drawers underneath. That way you can hold my tools and paints and all that. And that would give me more room to have, like, airbrushes and all that. I say and all that a lot. I think it's just because I'm a bit, ugh, right now. But yeah, my name is Valor. 
Thanks for watching. And I'm going to go hang out with the humans at the party. <laughs> Boop.